We know that exciting feeling of unboxing that new MacBook Pro that you just bought, lifting that lid up, ripping every single plastic off that laptop. But then as we start using it, we notice there's a lot of things that you can change. Like it's missing that personal touch, that character. So I wanna give you 13 customizations that will enhance your MacBook experience. The two first things that I changed as soon as I got this laptop was the screen size and the tap to click. I believe with the default display size that they provide, doesn't utilize the screen. When you select the more space option, it allows more things to be displayed on the screen. Now you can open multiple windows. It still has that clean vibe to it. Now with the tap to click, this is a personal preference. You could do this if you want, you might thank me, but it just makes going through everything a lot more easier. I don't have to actually press onto the trackpad. I can just tap it quickly, go into what I need to do. So to enable the tap to click, just simply go to your system settings, go all the way down to trackpad, and then there'll be a section that says tap to click and just enable it. The first thing that I always end up installing is a browser. Certain applications can't be installed through the app store and we need a browser. I've got nothing against Safari, but I've been using Arc Browser for about a couple months now and it's been fun. The way they designed the Arc Browser is just amazing. Like the way you can have your spaces, easily just swipe between each one. You've got your boards. Like I've been designing my new office at home and I've been using the easel board. It's a cool way where you can start pinning different things from the internet and it's gonna be displayed in one place. So I'll take screenshots and then it's like links so it's like thinking about Pinterest, but everything in one. Now we all know the number one thing to change to give character to the laptop is the wallpaper. The app that I'm gonna recommend for wallpaper is Unsplash. Now this is an amazing free application that you can get from the app store. Once you download it, it's gonna be easily accessible in your control center. Once you open it, it will throw random wallpapers at you. You can select a theme of styles of wallpapers that you like. You can add your own one. You can even select timers for the wallpapers to be changing. And what I love about these wallpapers, they're high quality wallpapers with no watermarks. And it's so simple. If you don't know how to create your own wallpaper, this makes it so much easier for you to use stunning wallpapers that will transform your MacBook. Now the wallpaper out of the way, the thing that I think about that can enhance that desktop even more is adding a clock. Even though that you've got the clock on the top right, sometimes it's not as convenient as looking at all the way to the top, but if it's on the desktop right in front of you, it's gonna be useful and it's gonna look more aesthetically pleasing. And the app that I recommend for the clock widget is desktop flip clock. And what I really like about this app, you can use different clock styles. So from flip, digital, dial clock, but I prefer using the flip clock because it gives that nice cool effect. It's a nice way to have a clock on your desktop that will make it aesthetically more pleasing. As we're still on the desktop, I've realized by default, your icons and all your pictures kind of just get splattered everywhere. And I like to enable use stacks and this kind of just compacts everything and makes your desktop look a lot cleaner. Do you not agree? Our desktop's already looking amazing. Another app that I recommend is Top Notch. Now this is a very simple application that turns your menu bar completely black. I know there's a lot of people that do not like that notch and this kind of makes it disappear without you kind of really noticing. And this application is very versatile. It works with dynamic wallpapers, multiple screens. And the thing is, once you turn it on once, you never have to worry about it. The only thing is when you're downloading it, you have to use something like Arc Browser or Safari. It's not on the App Store. We all know Spotlight, but this application here takes Spotlight to the next level. It's called Alfred. Once I downloaded this, it made me reaching certain files, documents, applications, everything so much more easier. And the way I customize the hotkey is option space is Alfred and command space is Spotlight. The only reason I still use Spotlight is it can still access system settings what Alfred can't. But if I go into the settings under web search and what I've done is I've created my own custom commands. So for example, if I type in YT space, that will then search into YouTube and I can type in whatever and once I press enter, it will display that search result on YouTube. And you can do so much. If you just press space, space, and then type in a folder name, for example, it will open up that specific folder. And it just made 
accessing files, documents, applications, searching on the internet so much more quicker. Like I don't have to open up the actual application like Google or anything. I can just type, use Alfred and it'll, he'll do the thing for me. Highly recommended. And the great thing is it's a free application. Now there is a paid option, but you can survive on the free option. Now if you want to talk about productivity, this app will make things so much easier. Now it's called Drop Over. Now think of it like this. Imagine you've got two finders open and you're trying to take one thing from here and put it in another place or take it from your finder and put it into your notes. Now the way that Dropover works is simple. You just pick out any of the item, wiggle it around and you'll see an application pop up saying drop your file here. Now once you've collected everything that you're trying to move, simply go to the next location and drop everything there. It's that simple. Now the great thing about Dropover doesn't have to be transferring over a file to another place. You can create iCloud links or drop over links. You can even airdrop all of these files. Now the next application kind of makes me feel like home when I started using the MacBook and it's called Rectangle. Do you know that snapping feature on Windows where you can just drag your applications or your windows to any side and it just sticks there and it'll just take up the space over there? Now this application allows you to use commands as well as just using the trackpad and mouse. So simply just grab any application, whack it to the side, whack it to the top if you want full screen. And if you want to use the shortcuts, just simply press option, command, left, right, or any of the keys. There are so many other customizations of how small you want your screens if you want a quarter the size. Now the next customization, I don't know why it's not set as default when you get your MacBook, but it's the finder's path as well as status bar. Now to enable these, just simply go into the view and then go all the way to say show path bar and show status bar. Now this allows you to see your file structure. And so depending on what folder you're in, you can easily access the next folder as well as go back a few folders. Now also you can be able to see the overall space that's available on your Mac. And it's happened to me so many times where I'm about to download something and I look, I'm like, yo, I haven't got enough storage. So I start clearing stuff out. Now these are the little few things that annoy me about Mac. I don't know why they don't set these things as default. If you want to see my three months review, just click on the cards over there or I'll put them in the description and you'll just see how I was so frustrated on certain things. The next customization I recommend is removing any unnecessary apps on your dock bar. There's so many applications that they just throw at you, 50% of them you're not gonna touch. So I recommend just removing as much as possible and just leaving the essential applications there because majority of them you can easily access with Alfred as well as Spotlight. After you cleaned up your dock, this moves us on to the next app and it's called Tinkle Tool. This application allows you to customize the dock bar a little bit more just to make it more efficient to use. I like to have the dock bar on auto hide. But the thing is, once you put it on auto hide by default, there's that little latency. As soon as you drag your cursor all the way down, it takes that little couple seconds for it to load up. What Tinker Tool allows is the animation to be disabled. So it makes it so instant. As soon as your cursor hits the bottom, your dock is showing. This is very useful for me and I highly recommend installing this. I will put this application in the description as well because it's one of them applications that you can't find in the app store as well. Now moves us on to the next area to customize, which is the menu bar. Just like the dock, the menu bar has so many unnecessary applications showing up there because as we install so many things, they're all gonna be showing up there, which then moves us on to the next app called Hidden Bar. Once you install it, it's so simple to use. There's gonna be an arrow once you open it up. With this arrow, it can be easily moved by holding command. And then once you choose where you want the arrow to be placed, any icons that's on the other side will be hidden. Now, if you wanna show them back up easily, just click on the arrow and they all start showing. There's always these icons that you never wanna see. And this is a nice way to keep your menu bar looking clean organized and less cluttered. Whenever I was transferring files over, I never got to see how fast my file transfer was. If you class yourself as someone that's very tech savvy, that wanna know all of these type of information, I recommend looking at the app called Usage. The app pretty much helps you monitor virtually a lot of things from network speed, to how much your data is flowing from upload to download. There's a lot of information this application gives you. And the crazy thing is it's completely free. Now, if you're that individual that always wants to know exactly what's happening on their PC, this app is for you.
Now the last application I'm going to be mentioning is amphetamine. Sometimes you do not want your PC to fall asleep. This application helps your PC stay awake whilst you're downloading an application or loading a video or doing anything that requires your PC to stay awake. It's got so many options to choose from. Now you can choose infinity or you can choose up to 24 hours. There's even cool features where it says while well, app is running or even a specific file being downloaded. So once that file stops downloading, it will stop doing its thing. There is another cool feature about amphetamine where it allows remote workers to have their cursors move. So if you're being monitored, you can select certain amount of times that you want your cursor to move and it will show your status as being online. Now with these 13 apps and customizations, I believe now your MacBook has become more customized to you as well as be more productive to use. Now, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe as I'm planning to make similar videos like this in the future. So take care guys, see you in the next one.